Praise God. Amen. Let's go ahead and start tonight. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his love and thank God for his faithfulness. We're back in uh, the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter six. And tonight we want to share with you and talk, talk about <clears throat> treasure as is the next category, the next area where we're talking about the Beatitudes. He, Jesus talks about treasure. So <clears throat> without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to draw your attention also to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 as well. So Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19, and also 2 Corinthians. All right, here we go. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, we're picking up where uh, we left off last week. We talked about fasting, and this is all a part of what is known as the Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount. Um, actually, it is believed um, the Sermon on the Mount starts in chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5 and, and covers chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. So we're going to just deal with chapter five, uh, 6 here tonight and just moving forward for the next week. So just focusing on this one chapter, breaking it down as the Lord allows us to and helps us. So again, verse 19, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, it reads, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. So the treasures, and I'll talk about treasures, the word treasures a little bit more, but here Jesus is saying, lay not, store not up or invest not, store, invest, of treasures up, up on earth. Now, we do do that. Um, we organize, we plan, we set aside, we save. As God gives us wisdom and as God leads us and directs us in our lives. Um, but here Jesus is, he's making a comparison and he's giving some spiritual meaning to eternity. So he says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Why did he say this? One of the reasons I believe why he said this was because the treasures that we lay up here on earth, be it our bank accounts or a storage room full of food or what have you, those things are subject, be it financial, be it gold, silver, what have you, those things are subject and vulnerable to the world that we live in, be it men or the elements and or, or, and or deterioration. So he says, lay not up for yourselves treasures up on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and still, so again, there's a vulnerability to the treasures that we store here on earth. Verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So now he's talking about the eternal sustainability of the treasures that we store up in heaven or our investment, spiritual investment. So he makes this comparison, that which we store here on earth, and if we do that only, then it is subjected and it is vulnerable 
to the elements here in this world, be it moth, be it rust, be it man. But the treasures that we lay up, store up, invest in, in heaven, those treasures, they are not subject to the elements of this world, moths, rust, nor thieves. Verse 21, he says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So we really have to look at treasure. Let's look at the word treasure. Let's reiterate just for a few moments here and kind of go back over Matthew chapter six. So as we read Matthew chapter six, and we've already explored and dealt with, talked about, discussed these other areas. Initially, he dealt with alms. So the different categories. He dealt with alms. What are alms here in chapter six? It is the charitable giving, the charitable giving. So Jesus, yes, he instructed us and told us to give alms, that charitable giving, but he instructs us on how to do it and how not to do it. Don't do it like the hypocrites. Do it with sincerity of heart and genuineness of spirit and soul. Then after talking about alms, and the charitable giving, giving us instruction in the Beatitudes, a certain attitude, a certain mindset as we live for Christ. Then he goes into prayer, right? And we talked about what is known as, traditionally known as the Lord's Prayer, but truly it's the model prayer. For Jesus said in the Bible, he said what? After this manner, when you pray. So here's a model, and we know this to be true personally um, as individuals, we have a long line of things to pray about uh, constantly in our lives. There's a, a multiple things that come up that arise um, that we face in our lives that we must pray. So a huge teaching on prayer, a life of prayer, a prayer life always praying, continuing in prayer, praying without ceasing. Why? Because there's many things. But here in Matthew chapter six, he gives us he gives us a model. After this manner, pray. So we went through that, acknowledging and reverencing the Father, placing the Father in heaven. And then in that model prayer, in that the manner of how we pray, saying, Father, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So there's a humility part, there's a submission part, there's a willingness part to do the Father's will here on earth where we are as it is done in heaven. So we are to emulate the Father's will in earth. So, so he talked about prayer, the model prayer, then he went into fasting and like alms, he told us, to fast, how not to fast, how not to be in our fasting like the hypocrites, but when we fast to do it in secret, right? It's between God and I, and I talked about fasting, the Daniel fast and the normal fast and the, the, the various ones, um, but just doing it with like alms, with sincerity of heart and and, and genuineness, because it's so easy to get caught up in doing things, be it giving of alms, prayer, fasting. It's very easy to get caught up in the traditions, get caught up in the customs, the way we've been taught, what we've been exposed to, um, but God has given us the framework on how to and how not to give alms, to pray, to fast. And really, 
fasting, as we talked about it, is a matter of discipline, right? It's a matter of the discipline, refraining ourselves from be it food or from any particular thing um, that we need, we feel we need to gain control over and we need that spiritual help, that divine assistance. So now we want to go into treasure here, Matthew chapter six, verse 19 through 21, which we've already read. And really, as we look at this, as, as we look at this and a, a picture of this, what is Jesus talking about here? He's really talking about being heavenly minded, right? Being heavenly minded. Um, and we'll see this later on as he's concluding this, this, this chapter in verse 33, where he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he will add all these other things. So what is this about? We are here on earth, the Beatitudes or having a certain mindset, a, a frame of mind, a, a certain attitude when it comes to living for God, when it comes to being a Christian. So he covered charitable giving, he covers prayer, he covers fasting. And now I call it, I label it um, storing up or investment. What are we investing in? What's dear to our hearts? What do we as believers in Christ consider worthy? Or what do we put great value on? Let me frame it that way. What's of great value to us? What's a treasure? So when we think about treasure, the word treasure, I want you to think about it from this perspective, something that is near and dear to your heart. Something that is near and dear to my heart. That's what I treasure. That's what I value. I put great worth on that, whatever it might be, or whatever, it, it may be a multiple number of things. It could be people, it could be relationships, it could be whatever you deem it to be. So my question is, what is your treasure? What is your treasure? Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Listen to what Paul says here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Paul says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure, this heavenly treasure, this investment that God has, has placed in us, in our earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What is he talking about there? It is believed he's talking about this wonderful salvation as a believer, as a Christian, one has to continue with the realization, the value of eternal salvation, not religion, not to mix it up with having a state of mind of religion, just, just attending church, attending functions, of the church, but valuing the eternal salvation, the salvaging of your soul, the restoration, the reconciliation of your soul to God. Paul said, we have this treasure, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We have this treasure, this thing that is that should be near and dear to your heart, the salvation of the Lord something that we should value, God's salvation. It should be dear. It should be near to our heart. And we have it in this earthen vessel so that the power may be of God and not of us, correct? So as we value this treasure Paul's talking about here in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, 
as we value it, we share that with others, the, the alms, the charitable giving, sharing what we value, what we consider worth, sharing that with others, just like giving, right? If you, if you value your time, you give your time to someone else, you value your resources, be it financial, whatever, you give that, right? Because you believe it can benefit someone else. That's how it is with this gospel, this good news of Jesus Christ. So now let's go back to Matthew chapter six. And I wanted to share that of uh, second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven, because Paul really kind of put it in context. As we look at Matthew chapter six, one can lead, one can define and come to a conclusion, whatever treasure they desire, right? But Paul really put it in perspective and he, he's talking about this spiritual treasure, which is eternal salvation, liberation, deliverance by Jesus that we have as believers. So in Matthew chapter six, verse 19, and also let me share with you, um, this is also parallel with Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 21, and Luke chapter 12, verse 31 through 34. So to get a really good picture, um, you can read both of them, Matthew chapter six, really the whole chapter is parallel with Luke chapter 12. And that gives you a good, good picture of what was going on. In Luke chapter 12, he deals with the, the rich ruler, some people call it the rich young ruler and Jesus had a conversation and he uses the language around treasure, right? When he talks about that young ruler. So that's just good for your uh, moving forward in, when, you, when you study, when you study, not just taking it these three verses, but paralleling these three verses in Matthew 6, 19, 21 with Luke chapter 12. Again, verses 19, 19 through 21, as well as 30, 31, or excuse me, 16 through 21, as well as 31 through 34, the whole chapter. So let's talk about this. Matthew 6, 19, he says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. So I've already kind of mentioned it. Why would he say that? Because in other places in the Bible, he talks about, the talents and investing and and he talks about these different things. But when we look at this, we also have to look at priorities, right? And again, he talks he talks about priorities and prioritization in Matthew chapter six and verse 33. As he's concluding this chapter, he says what? Seek ye first. So that's prioritizing. So as we look at Matthew chapter six, verse 19, we can insert priority as well. And really brothers and sisters, as we just talk about it and think about it, it's really about having not just a heavenly mind, heavenly minded, being heavenly minded, but it's also a healthy mind, a healthy mind. So he says, and putting things in perspective, right? And keeping things balanced in God. Because in any and all of our lives, things can get out of balance very quickly. Priorities can get distorted very easily. All it takes is for our emotions to be moved a certain way. And then priorities just go out of whack. So God has given us his word to help us, to stir, steer us, and keep us headed in the right direction. If we trip, stumble, and, and fall by the, not really completely fall by the wayside, but get off track, then we can go back to the word of God. And the word of God, through the help of the Holy Spirit, can get us back on track. That's why we have the word of God. And the Holy Spirit uses the word of God. It's the sword of, it's the, sword of the spirit, the Bible says, right? Ephesians chapter 6. And that is to 
as it is said, to whip us back into shape or to get us back on that right, that straight and narrow path that leads to heaven. Because that's the goal. As we're living here on earth, we're navigating each day. We're dealing with ourselves. We're dealing with others. We're dealing with situations. We're dealing with making decisions. Our priorities can change, right? And they do change as circumstances arise and situations as we face those situations. But brothers and sisters, we have the word of God to help us keep balance, keep balance. And it helps us, I believe, in my opinion, through priorities, priorities. And not and everyone doesn't understand that all the time, but that's okay. And that's where, like Daniel, every individual must purpose in their heart. Going back to the theme, right? Purpose in your heart, how you're going to live, what you're going to do. Purpose in your heart that you're going to prioritize and then focus on that purpose. Stay focused on that purpose. Let it be intentional every day in your life. Because again, things can get out of whack very easily in any of our lives. All right. So lay not up for yourselves treasures up on earth where moth and rust corrupts. So again, he's not telling us not to store. He's not telling us not to save. He's not telling us not to do this, but he's putting in, perspe in perspective that you can have tens and hundreds and millions of dollars stored in the bank. And guess what? The banking system can collapse. Oh, that would never happen. That's what they thought in 1929. It is subject to collapse. You can store food in a room next door here and rodents can get to it or mildew or it can grow old just as a result of the elements of, the, of this world. And yet we laid up for ourselves this treasure, this something that we valued. And that's great. That's good because that's a planner. That's an administrator. That's an organizer. That's someone who's prioritizing and thinking ahead, not just thinking in the moment, but thinking ahead. A rainy day may come. I may retire one day, right? Or whatever the case, just moving forward, forward thinking, and not just in the moment. I believe that's beneficial to us, but also putting in perspective that I must keep God first. Because any and everything that I do in this life, it doesn't matter how well a planner that I may be, you may be, it is subject to deterioration. It is subject to falling apart in this world. But as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and keep God in the, in, in, in the right place in our hearts and our lives, if it so happens that that which we've stored, that which we consider treasure, because you have a bank account, you have a saving account, it, 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 it's a value, it has some value, whatever that value might be. It has value, but it doesn't outweigh the spiritual value that God has invested in us, right? So lay not up for yourselves on earth, treasures up on earth, where that's the only treasures, that's the only hope that you have. My hope is in my bank account. I hope not all of it, because Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he's making a parallel. He said, if our hope is in this world, and it's in this world only, you're most men miserable, because that which your treasure, that you place hope in the treasure that you stored up, you know that it's subject. It's like people on Wall Street, people, investors and different things, they're, I used to deliver the Wall Street Journal back in the early 90s. And I had a, a route, a Wall Street Journal, and it amazed me how many people 
received the Wall Street journals. And one time I, I just went through and had all these investment numbers and all this. And people, it's okay to invest in that. They look at it every day, looking at the numbers go up and down, vacillating, up and down, this and that. How stressful can that be? When your hope is in that and in that only. I Let me just insert this. Um, I, I often think about, it takes my mind back to when we had the, um, the energy crisis that went on. And um, what was the company? Enron. These individuals who had worked all their lives had invested, and I remember this woman in particular, had invested in Enron and their stocks looked so great. Uh, this one particular man, I believe he lived in the Houston area or Texas, that area where Enron was based. And he had $8 million in his retirement, so he thought. Um, and he had retired and when Enron collapsed and all the fraudulent uh, activity was exposed, he found out he only had $8,000 and he had retired. He was now in his 60s, 70s, I believe. And he had retired and he had, when it all, when all the dust settled, what he thought was $8 million, it was only $8,000. What does he do? If his hope was in this world only, then he would have been of most men miserable. But when our hope is in God and our priority is in God and our treasure is in God, brothers and sisters, if something like that transpires in our lives, in this world, then we can lean on God because... I want you to think about it. Let's think about this logically. We do what we know to do as individuals. And we do it in faith. So faith without works is dead. So we're talking about treasures, something that we value, something that's near and dear to our hearts. And if we're talking about it from a secular point of view, retiring or whatnot, then we're putting away, right? Because we are forward thinking. But we can't control the elements by which we have entrusted and put our hope with anticipation, our hope, our expectation that they're going to grow that money so that it will last us the remainder of our life here on earth. We're putting, we have a degree of hope in that particular treasure. But again, it's subject to thieves. Remember the Ponzi scheme, Charles Ponzi? What about those who have clothes and, and fabrics and all these different things subject to moth? What about those who have precious metals and different things? They can rust out. So it's not that we don't do these things because that's wisdom, right? That's forward thinking, but we prioritize. We keep a healthy mindset. We keep balanced and we put our trust in God. So let's go on. So he says in verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth. And he tells us, the he, he gives us the why. He gives us the reason. He doesn't just tell us, but he tells us why and the possible fallout of this. But then he goes on and he says in verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures, that which is valuable to you. And number one, salvation, right? Eternal salvation, brothers and sisters. What did Job say? Job said, we came into the world with nothing. So that which you have acquired, even to date, as we are on here, that which you acquire to date, be it furniture, be it clothes, be it automobiles, be it a 401k bank account, whatever it might be, might be that you value that's near and dear to your heart because you've worked for it. You've earned it. You sacrifice for it. 
and that's fine. But again, it is subject to deterioration. So Jesus tells us in verse 20, he says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Job said, we came into the world with nothing. And sure enough, all the things that we acquire through our hard work, we can't take it with us. What can we take with us? That which God gives us. That which God gives us is a treasure. It's something that you and I should value. The sweet salvation of Jesus Christ the wonderful mercy of almighty God. We should value it to such a degree where it is near and dear to our hearts. It is so near and dear to our hearts that we want to share it with others. As Paul said, I read it to you already. Let's go back over it. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. He said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in us, contained in this vessel, this tabernacle. So he wasn't talking about the material substance. He wasn't referring to uh, his the resources that he acquired or was given to him of this world. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency, so notice, he said, this treasure in this earth, earthen vessel, that the excellency, that word excellency, excellency comes from the word excel. So the treasure that God gives us, it just gets better, 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 and better. It excels. We cannot say that about the, the, the treasures that we up, obtain here in this life. You get a car. Every time you drive it, it's deteriorating. It's deteriorating. You buy clothes. Every time you wash, uh, wear them, wash them, clean them, whatever, they're deteriorating. You get furniture. Every time you sit on it, you use it, it's deteriorating, right? And we can go on and on and on. You have a bank account. Every time you take money out of there, uh, that money is being reduced. It's, it's, it's always going down. Hence, this is why we're replacing it. Man, this is the best uh, appliances I, I've ever had. You keep using them, they're going to deteriorate because everything in this world is deteriorating. But as he said in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, he said that the excellency, that the treasure that God gives us, that eternal salvation, the Holy Spirit, and all the spiritual blessings, right? Right? Ephesians chapter one, verse, or Ephesians chapter one, verse three. <clears throat> God hath blessed us with all <clears throat> spiritual, excuse me, all. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. The spiritual blessings are the ones that excel for you and I. Paul said that the power may be of God and not of us. So it's not our acquiring. It's not our gain. But God will get the glory. God receives the glory. So the treasure that God has stored in us, Jesus Christ, we are Christians, brothers and sisters. And just the very essence of Christianity your life, my life, with all its failures and mishaps and imperfections. Our lives are living epistles that's read by all men, and our lives are able to lift up Jesus. That Jesus receives the glory. And as Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. So your life and my life, as we live for God, it's excelling in the sense that people are witnessing the Jesus in our lives and people are being added to the body of Christ. So the body of Christ is excelling. The body of Christ is growing as a result of this treasure, this 
spiritual, this divine treasure that's in us called salvation. It doesn't deteriorate. It doesn't get old. It doesn't fade away. That the power may be of God and not of us. Not something that we've done. Not something that we've worked out. Excuse me. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, he says, lay up, verse 20, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So let's talk about heavenly investment. Heavenly investment, spiritual investment. Again, I'm not knocking, I'm not taking away uh, with working, earning, acquiring here in this life. I have told people in the past, and I tell you today, live the best, have the best quality of life that you can have. Just keep God before all those things. Keep God in his rightful place in your heart, in your life, in all your living. In all your living, make sure we, I'm included, that we keep God in his rightful place in our lives. This treasure that he's given us does not decay. So he says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break in to steal it. So he goes on, and I'm going to conclude here in verse 21. He said, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. I've heard people say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. But from their actions, I've noticed that their heart is in the substance and the resources of this world. Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. We can dispute that. But the word of God is true. What did he say in Numbers 21? He said, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So the treasure, again, is defined as something that's near and dear. God's salvation should be near and dear to us. God's spiritual blessings in our lives should be near and dear to us. And if that is so, my prayer is that is so in all of our lives, then that's where our heart will be. Our heart will be to serve the Lord. What did Jesus say in another place in the Gospels? He said, serve the Lord with all your heart, all your might, all your strength. As we do that, that identifies what's of value to us. That's our treasure. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Ask yourself the question. Let us ask ourselves the question. What do I consider near and dear? What's near and dear to me? No one can answer that but yourself. No one should answer that. No one should define that but yourself. What is value? What, what, what do you value? What do you value? What are you willing? What am I willing to constantly make deposits into? Well, I value my bank account. I'm a deposit from every check. Every time I get some money, I'm a, I'm gonna make a percentage. I'm a that's great. Do you do that in God when when you have downtime when you're not working or drive? Do you pray? Do you read your Bible? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. I have found I'm gonna make a statement. 
it has been true for me. It may be true for you, but I don't want to tell someone their truths. I have I have made time at, at various times in my life. I have made time for everything else when I worked in IT and all that. I would spend hours and hours, sometimes nights on end, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, in the office, doing this job, right? 12, 15, 16, 18 hours sometimes. That's where my heart was. I wanted to get that job done. I wanted to fix that problem. I wanted to resolve. And then I asked myself, are you willing to do that for God, for that spiritual investment? Well, I'm tired. God knows my heart. God, he knows our heart. Yes, he does. He knows that where our treasure is, that's where our heart is as well. So you have to ask yourself, I believe we have to ask ourselves these type of questions. Where is my heart, God? Well, identify where your treasure is. What is your treasure? What's valuable to you? What's near and dear to you? And if you're more saturated, involved, thinking about, meditating on that over there, it could be a person. It can be a relationship. It can be a child. What happens is that that person, that thing becomes an idol, so God is out. Because Jesus says, serve the Lord with all your heart. He's going to take care of everything else. I think that's one of the most challenging things in Christianity. We feel we got to do it all. Well, I love them, I'm sure, but God loves our family members, our children, et cetera, more than we do. I told one brother one time, he was concerned and he ought to have been concerned about his child. But I, I saw the impact that was doing to him. I saw it was on his mind. I saw the worry, the fret, the, the it was unhealthy. And I said, you know what, brother? God loves your child. Jesus loves your child more than you do. So how can you say that? I'm, I'm the father, whatever. I said, when's the last time you took the time in your love for your child that you took the time and you counted every strand of hair on their head? Well, I've never done. I said, the Bible says that Jesus knows every strand of hair that's on that child's head. That's how much he loves her. So he's concerned about every aspect of her life, of his life. What I was trying to tell him was, trust in God. Put your treasure in God. Value Jesus to take care of your child. Don't lose sight of Jesus because of this problem and this situation. Because it's going to be a lot of situations and a lot of problems over the course of an individual's life. Brothers and sisters, we, we got to keep God at the forefront of our lives. and. He talked about this in Matthew chapter six. So here in verse 21, let me just go ahead and read it. Verse 21, he says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, if you have your Bible, now we're going to get to this as the Lord leads us probably next week, talking about thinking your thoughts, take no thought for your life. But let's jump down to verse 33. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added, added. I want you to focus on that word. He said, God said, all these things will be added unto you. Just prioritize. Let our treasure be in God. Yes, we invest in the world. Yes, we do the, but not allowing the treasures of this world, the substance of this world, the resources of this world, the works of our hands, not allowing it to become greater than our God. Not allowing it to dominate, govern, and dictate our hearts, the inner man, the inner woman. 
but allowing God through the power of the Holy Spirit to govern, to dictate our hearts and our lives so that the Holy Spirit can conform us into the image of Christ. Verse 33, he's going to take care of everything else. How many really believe that? And that's not situational. That's not circumstantial. That's the truth. That's the word of God. He's going to take care of everything. He said, if you seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, what's right, God? He said, all these other things, the things in this world, be it family, be it relationships, be it all these things that what he said in Hebrews chapter 12, right? Laying aside every weight, all these things. Not, I'm not talking about the sin factor. Let's talk about weights, Christians. What's weighing you down? What is weighing you down? Is it someone's sickness? Is it someone's situation? Is it this? Is He said, laying aside every weight that doth so easily beset us. Verse 2, Hebrews 12, 2. And look unto Jesus. So we are concerned. We should be concerned. But don't allow that concern to overweigh or become greater than God in our Because he's going to add the blessing. That's what he said in his word. And that's what Bible study is all about, right? Bible study is not just reading a book in the Bible and talking about, you know, God's going to prosper and all this. Let's pull this scripture here, pull this scripture here, pull this scripture. How does all these scriptures apply in our lives? How does these scriptures make God real in our hearts, in our lives? We need, I need, we need God to be real in our lives. People, we talk about the last days. Okay, whether if, if, if these are last days or not, regardless or if they are or if they're not, we need God in our lives. Our treasure should be in Christ. If if someone believes these are the last days and they're holding on to that thought and that, that idea, then my question is, wherever your treasure is, what's your treasure, number one? And wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart should be. It should be in alignment with God, right? If you believe these are the last days, if you believe God's going to wrap this thing up soon, very soon, then what's your treasure? What's your focus? What's near and dear to your heart, in your heart? Is it replacing God? Does it replace God? Does it take priority over God? And this is, I'm not saying this to condemn us because. Like I said, we all slip into that. I've slipped into that numerous times. We have that human element, but then we also have the word of God to get us back on track. The word of God to get us back on track. So we dealt with, in the Beatitudes here, the giving of alms, right? The charitable giving, but then prayer, right? Prayer helps us put things in perspective, keep things in perspective. And then as we pray, if we need to do our part and it requires refraining from fasting, then do that. And fasting, allow yourself to be cleansed, to be purged, to get back on track so that we can identify what our treasure is and we can prioritize and say, you know what? This is my treasure. My treasure is in God, and this is where my heart is, right? For my heart, wherever my treasure is, that's where my heart's going to be. And I'm going to identify, come what may, come what will. My treasure is in this earthen vessel. It's the salvation, the glorious gospel of Jesus. Matthew 6, 33, and long as I prioritizing in that spiritual prioritization, keep things balanced, he's going to add all these other things that I need him to add in this life.
that I'm concerned about, that I'm praying about, that I have fasted, that I've been given. It all comes together, brothers and sisters. For such a time as this, God needs you and I to be heavenly minded, not so heavenly minded to where that we're no earthly good, but to be heavenly minded that we invest in this treasure that we have in this earthen vessel, this eternal salvation that Jesus has made available to all of us. God is needing you and I, brother and sister, for such a time as this. We are the church. We are the instrument. We are the tool that God has called out of the world to influence and impact the world for Jesus Christ. And judgment begins in the house of the Lord. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, if the salt has lost his savior, wherewith can the world be saved? Brothers and sisters, we have the word of God. We have the studying of the word of God. What did Paul say to Timothy? He said, study to show thyself approved unto God, not unto Perkins, not unto your spouse, not unto the Bible study group you're a part of. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dissecting, rightly placing the word of God, making it applicable in our current lives, the word of truth. It's true. And when we rightly dis dissect the word of truth and apply the truth to our lives, then it's the truth that will make us free. It's the truth that will keep us free. For Jesus said, know it. How do, how, how, how do we know it? How, how can we come to the place where we know the truth? It's through the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing cometh by the word of God, right? And the word of God is true. So treasure, identify your treasure. Let's go back to the theme here. Once you identify what your treasure is, I pray it's in alignment with God's word. Purpose in your heart. I'm going to keep this divine treasure that he's placed in earthen vessels, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. I'm going to keep that at the priority of my life. I'm still going to do the other things. I'm still going to uh, use wisdom as I navigate this life. We have to do that. I'm not taking away. I'm saying prioritize and keep God first, the treasure that he's placed in us. Keep it first. Don't lose sight of it. Your spouses are depending on it. Your parents are depending on it. Your nieces, your nephew, your children, your grandchildren are depending on you and I, on us to be and to display the Jesus that's in us. What are we laying up? We're laying up the treasures. What's your treasure? What are you willing to invest in? Invest in. Invest in God in prayer. Invest in God in giving of alms, in your charitable giving, however God lays on your heart. Invest in God. Invest in God in disciplining yourself in fasting. Let that be your treasure. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word truly is a lamp unto our feet, and it's a light unto our pathway. I pray that you continue to help us, Lord. Continue to help me to navigate life each day with the challenges that are in life, Lord. Help me, help us to allow you to be real, Lord. Our greatest obstacle at times is ourselves. And Lord, we need your help. We need your help. We want to be Christians, not in name only, but we want to be Christ-like in our lives, Lord. Help us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask these things in your wonderful and precious name. We say amen and amen.
Praise God. Amen.